Joanna Mackey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'm, I'm very happy to take a call on the third reading of the Ngāti Manawa and Ngāti Whare Claims Settlement Bill. I want to acknowledge the leadership and the tenacity of the negotiators and the people of Ngāti Manawa and Ngāti Whare in what has been a long process. And as other members have done, acknowledge those who have passed on. Treaty settlement legislation isn't really done in five years. It's done over generations. It's done through the sweat and blood of many, many people who fought long and hard so that we could be standing here in this House today passing this historic piece of legislation. And as others have done, I specifically want to pay tribute to Bill Bird and the hard work that he put into ensuring that we're here today celebrating the third reading of this legislation. I want to acknowledge the Minister of Treaty Settlements, the Minister of Māori Affairs, um, both from this government and the previous government who carried out the negotiations. Um, Mr Speaker, Treaty Settlement legislation really does go to the heart of our nationhood and it's, it's always extremely satisfying to be able to reach the uh, end of a process and in fact the beginning of a new stage of a more mature relationship between the Crown and between the people of Ngāti Manawa and Ngāti Whare. And I want to recognise the generosity, the generosity of those people in agreeing to the terms of this settlement. As um, one of our former colleagues, the Honourable Dr Michael Cullen, said, the generosity in these matters always lies with the Hiwi, not with the Crown. And I want to recognise the generosity of the people of Ngāti Manawa and Ngāti Whare in coming to an agreement today so that this legislation can be passed. Um, Mr Speaker, it is appropriate that the claims of Ngāti Manawa and Ngāti Whare are brought alongside each other in this legislation. Um, as my colleague Parakura Horomia has said, Labour has supported these, uh, this legislation since 2004 and again I want to acknowledge the generosity of the iwi in agreeing to put aside the negotiations on their treaty settlement so that the Central North Island deal could be done in 2008. That's not a small, um, that's, that, that's not a, a small thing for, for an iwi to put aside those negotiations and it is very important that it be recognised. Um, Mr Speaker, the claims in relation to Ngāti Manawa are primarily around the events of the New Zealand wars and what's striking is how little New Zealanders in general know about the events of the New Zealand wars and yet what an incredibly um, dramatic impact they had on the shaping of our nation. Um, in terms of the Crown's actions and omissions in respect of the operation and the impact of native land laws, again not something that most New Zealanders know anything about and that is something that needs to be rectified because it is something that has shaped our nation and it is something that, that I, I believe uh, needs to be more firmly acknowledged across Aotearoa New Zealand. It also addresses the actions in respect of the Crown's land purchasing techniques of land that Ngāti Manawa wished to retain. Um, and the, the, the grievances that come with that, and also the 20th century development of land, rivers and forests. Um, and I'll come back to that later, but I think that's a very, very, a very, very unique and special part of this particular treaty settlement is the, is the focus on conservation, um, both on land and on rivers. When it comes to, to Ngāti Whare, um, the settlement relates primarily to the Crown's actions again during the 1860s wars, the impact of the Native Land Court and the subsequent land alienation, the Uruweta District Native Reserves Act, Crown corporatisation, the cessation of indigenous forest logging, and the return of Manganui Village, which was built by the State Forestry in 1948 to support native milling and exotic replanting programs, but when it was returned, was not returned with the sufficient resources to ensure that it was able to be maintained at an adequate standard. And these are things that are being redressed in this legislation. Mr Speaker, others have touched on uh, the atrocities and devastating history of the people of Ngāti Manawa and Ngāti Whare and, and hopefully while this legislation can never fully right those wrongs, it can start the process of healing. And it is an important step in acknowledging the deep, deep regret of the Crown for the atrocities committed, for the loss of life and for the harm inflicted on the people of Ngāti Whare relating to the 1896 attack on Te Harima Pā. And it also acknowledges the prejudicial effect on Ngāti Manawa of the several wars fought between the Crown and Māori in the Eastern Bay of plenty from 1865. This is truly comprehensive, practical and groundbreaking treaty legislation and I want to particularly congratulate all those who are involved in negotiations on the strong practical emphasis around protection and regeneration of conservation sites. What this means is that future generations of Ngāti Manawa and Ngāti Whare and in fact future generations of all New Zealanders are going to benefit from, uh, from what is certainly natural taonga and we thank you for taking such a practical approach to that. I particularly um, want to congratulate uh, the iwi on the creation of the Rangataiki River Forum. 
Um, certainly in the Eastern Bay of Plenty, the Rangitaiki and its tributaries are synonymous with the people of Ngāti Manawa and Ngāti Whare. And I have spent a lot of time travelling up and down the Rangitaiki River, observing the damage that's been caused, uh, particularly by the damming of that river. It's not something that you can see from the road. It's not something that a lot of people are aware of. This is a truly spectacular river, truly spectacular river. Uh, as you travel up it, you notice that the forests of, of petrified trees, uh, but what you particularly notice is the erosion, is the damage, is the um, significant, significant dropping in the level of the river uh, when, when the dams on the river are at full bore, the impact that's having on the ecology of the river, the impact that that's having on the vegetation around the river. And it was with great concern for, I think, all people of the Eastern Bay of Plenty uh, when Trust Power sought to actually increase their water take on the Rangataiki River um, to double it um, and what damage that may have caused. And while that didn't go through, it did show, as my colleague Nanaya Mahuta said, the importance of, of having a forum where we are not subject to the, the waxing and waning of elected representatives and what their personal views might be on some of these issues, but where some firm ground bottom lines can be put in place about the protection of the ecology of the Rangataiki River um, and, and the health of that river, because that river is in serious trouble. And I congratulate you for so staunchly uh, wanting to protect the Rangataiki River, its tributaries, and I hope that we can see some improvement in the health of that particular river. And again, touching on the, colleague, the comments from my colleague, Nanaya Mahuta, um, around the relationship with the Regional Council and the relationship with the management of those natural resources. Um, we note that there's some significant local government reforms coming along soon and what that might mean for the Bay of Plenty as a whole, particularly as it is a, a regional authority that has elected Māori seats, uh, which are working very, very well. And what any kind of amalgamation might mean for the future of those Māori seats, I think, is incredibly uh, important. And while that's not a debate for today, it's important to put that on the table um, because that definitely will have an impact on how the Regional Council manages some of those resources and the ability of iwi to have a say in that. And again, that's why this forum is so, so important. Um, so I, I'm not gonna take much longer, but I just, I want to acknowledge the history um, uh, in relation to the people of Ngāti Manawa and Ngāti Whare. Again, uh, it, it, I find it very sad that most people in the Eastern Bay of Plenty don't know the history of the iwi in their own area. You can't have a full appreciation of the significance of these settlements when you don't know what led up to them. You don't know the atrocities that occurred and you don't understand why that redress needs to happen. Um, we need to do better in this regard. Uh, and that's, again, another debate for another day, but important to put it on the table. So, Mr Speaker, no treaty settlement can ever fully right historic wrongs, but it does provide um, a basis for moving forward. It does provide the basis for a more mature relationship with the Crown. I congratulate the people of Ngāti Manawa, Ngāti Whare. I wish you all the best for the future. Kia ora. Uh, Reno Terakatni.